Hey, it's Jessica, your local vocal coach, and here is my beginner's guide to singing. This is going to break down all of the beginner things that you need to know as a beginner singer. And even if you're not a beginner singer, this is a great baseline for all of the things that you can go through and work on and know how to use your voice. Thank you for checking it out, and I hope you enjoy. The very first thing we're going to start with is how our body is our instrument. So your body is your instrument when you sing. It is literally your physical body and movements and changes in your vocal tract that create sound. So what does that mean? When we're taking in a breath, we're breathing through our mouth or through our nose. Generally through our nose is better as a singer. We're taking a breath through our nose, breathing it in through our lungs, coming out, going through the vocal tract in a way and creating sound. It's that very basic idea of taking in a breath, putting it out through the vocal tract, and then we have our sound for when we sing. So what are all these moving parts that we have going on? We have our mouth, our tongue, our jaw, our vocal tract area, which is just the larynx, the voice box, all of those things together, the vocal folds. And then we have even our lungs, our abdominal area, our diaphragm right below the lungs, all of these pieces that come together to create sound. Your vocal folds are basically two pieces of tissue that live in your larynx area and they vibrate on each other at a certain speed to create sound. It's those vibrations that create the sound, right? So it's just kind of like this, but very fast. So when we sing, one of the most important things as a beginner is to understand that we want to break things down simply. We want to keep everything nice and relaxed, keep the shoulders down and relaxed, the jaw and the head down and relaxed, everything in line, having a good, nice, relaxed singer's posture. And we're going to use that relaxed body to create a relaxed, easy, effortless sound. So when we, when we sing, we want to have lots of space, dropping our jaw down. We don't want to sing with a closed mouth, something very small like we would when we're talking because we're not going to have as much resonance. We're not going to have as much volume, as much pitch control, um, and things are going to tense up if we close off the mouth. So that's the very first thing as a beginner is to start watching yourself sing in a mirror and see if you're truly dropping down your jaw and getting a really good space while you're singing. If you look at any popular singer who's singing belty things, anything loud, anything really tough, even easy things, they're opening really wide. Ah, rather than ah, right? You can still get a decent sound with the closed lips, but it's gonna create tension and you're not gonna have that sound that you really, really are looking for. So drop the jaw down, open up, give yourself space to let the sound come out and be confident about it. Okay, now let's talk about warming up our voice before we go into a practice session or working on a song. So warming up is super important for your voice because we want to think of our voice as a muscle and something that we are training. So if you're a beginner especially or somebody who is just getting into singing, your voice probably hasn't been trained yet. It's something that is probably a little bit weak. It's probably something that you're not using all the time rather than just in that talking function. So we're gonna start training your voice, which means we need to have a really good warm up and something that's gonna get your vocal folds ready to go into a song. So here's a very easy, very beginner warm up that you can start out on that's gonna give you a great bass line. We're just gonna start on the word ah, again, dropping that jaw down, ah, and you can pick any note to start on. And we're just gonna sing ah, 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 and I'm just going up through my range comfortably. Don't worry about being on the correct pitch. Don't worry about anything like that. We're just taking an ah and going through our range. Another warm up that's gonna be really easy and really great for you guys to try is something that's called SOVTs or semi occluded vocal tract exercises. So, what that means is that we're gonna be doing something that takes 
some back pressure, puts it on your vocal folds, and helps to really strengthen them with very little effort. So the easiest one to do where you don't need anything but yourself is either a lip trill or a tongue trill. So for lip trills, we're just doing and you can take that anywhere in your range. Again, going from low to high, high to low, anywhere in between. It's a great one. And if you find it tricky to do a lip trill, try lifting up both sides of the cheek and that will help. If that's still really tricky, try a tongue trill. It's the same idea, but we're gonna be using our tongue. And there's the idea for a tongue trill. Both of those are gonna be super nice and easy on your vocal folds, but are gonna warm them up and get them ready to go into some singing. One more warm up you can try is something called humming. And now we all know what humming is but it's a really great one because it's not gonna put you right into singing. It's gonna give your vocal folds an ease into singing, but doing the same idea. So we're gonna think of humming as singing an ah, but with our lips closed. So instead of just hmm and really digging at that H sound, we wanna think ah. Um, and again, you can take this on any pitch, any part of your range that feels nice. Generally, I like to take humming a little lower in my range instead of higher, but anything that feels easy for your voice, just warming it up with a nice, easy hum. Once your voice is nice and warmed up, you can look at working on a song, something that you wanna learn how to sing, something that's maybe a little challenging for you, but not too hard, because we wanna jump into something that's pretty doable, right? And once you've picked a song, the very first thing I like to start with after learning the lyrics and the melody is figuring out where you're gonna breathe, and how you're gonna breathe. Those are the two very important things for beginner singers to look at in their songs. So we wanna print out the lyrics, print out the sheet music, and look at where we can easily take a breath in the song. So we wanna look through all of the phrases, listen to the song while you're doing this, and listen to where do we have a break in the words that we can get a good breath. I like to kind of break things into two different types of breath. One, a real full breath, and two, what I like to call a cheat breath, where maybe we don't have very much time, maybe we only have half a second to get a breath, but we need it. And we're just gonna take a very quick, very quick little tiny breath, and I call that my cheat breath. So look for those spots in your song and write them in. Write in where you're gonna take a big full breath and where you're gonna take those quick cheat breaths. And keep in mind that a lot of studio recordings will have overlapped spots where you're actually not able to breathe because the words are overlapping or they're so quick that there's nowhere to breathe. And in that case, we just need to cut out a word and make somewhere for us to breathe. So you can use your intuition for what would be best to cut out, cut it out, don't sing that word, and instead take that spot to take a breath. Okay, let's talk about what's happening when we're taking a breath as a singer and what it should kind of look like. First thing is to not overthink breathing as a singer. When you're doing functionally the correct things and you're relaxed and singing with ease, breathing is also gonna come with ease. I think a lot of times we overthink breathing as a singer and we think we need all of this air, but really it's about knowing where you're gonna breathe and having that planned out so that you don't miss a breath and then you don't need to scramble and get a massive amount of breath later on. So here's how you breathe as a singer and here's what's happening in our physical body. So when we take a breath, usually through the nose or the mouth, right? Hopefully through the nose as a singer, we're gonna take a breath, put it down into our lungs. The lungs are going to expand down, right? Because we don't have a lot of room to expand them out forward with our rib cage. And we don't wanna expand up and take those shoulders up and tense everything up. So we're gonna keep the shoulders nice and relaxed and down. And we're going to take a big deep breath, letting those lungs expand down. And here's where the term, the diaphragm comes in, which I'm sure you've heard before. We hear people all the time singing, saying, sing from your diaphragm, or make sure you're engaging your diaphragm, make sure your diaphragm is doing work. The only thing that matters is that we're using that function that comes naturally to us to have the lungs come down, the diaphragm right under the lungs is pushing down. It's just a muscle push, pushing down 
pushing everything in your stomach down to make room for the lungs to expand down. And it feels like your stomach is filling with air this way. But really what's happening, like I said, is just that diaphragm muscles pushing all those organs down and pushing everything down a little bit so that your lungs have some more room to expand and get a full breath without cinching our shoulders up like this. So again, we're just taking a nice deep breath. Lungs are expanding down, diaphragm's pushing down. Stomach is feeling like it's expanding out with air. And that's all there is to breathing like a singer. It's that simple. Last, let's talk about chest voice, mixed voice, head voice, falsetto, whatever you wanna call it. Let's talk about our registers. So registers are something that can be easily, easily misconstrued as a singer. I hear everybody having a different definition for all of these different things, but really it goes down to the basis of function and what your voice is functioning as, what your vocal folds are functioning as and what they're doing. So when we're singing in our chest voice, it all it is is your spoken voice on, on pitch. We're using the same function that we use to speak on pitch and we're creating a very full, a lot of times powerful, a lot of times much lower sound than when we're singing a lot higher. So chest voice is something like, if I were to speak this line, hi, my name is Jessica. And now I'm gonna put that on pitch. Hi, my name is Jessica. I'm using the same exact function. I'm still speaking it, but I'm putting it on pitch. So whatever pitch is in your song, say we're doing something by Adele. Uh, I let it fall, my heart, but as it fell, it rose to claim it. Right, those are all chest voice notes. And I can speak that exactly how I would sing it. I let it fall, my heart, but as it fell, you rose to claim it. Same thing, it's just on pitch. So chest voice is our spoken voice on pitch. And that's all it is. Head voice is a little different than that. And what's happening is instead of in chest voice where our vocal folds are short and fat and they're vibrating a little bit slower, we're thinning them out, stretching them out and they're vibrating faster to go at a higher frequency so that we're singing higher notes. And generally to do this, we're putting a little bit more air through the vocal folds to get them to go faster. So head voice, a lot of times will sound airier, lighter, higher than chest voice. And it definitely a lot of times will have a more singy quality or a singy sound to it than the spoken quality and the powerful quality, almost meaty quality of chest voice. So for example, we have, I let it fall my heart, but as it fell, you rose to claim it, chest voice. And then when we go up into that, that chorus of that song, but I set fire to the rain. And I'm singing that very light, very airy, very head voicey. And then we get to mixed voice. Mixed voice is and tends to be the most complicated of the three, but really I think it's just overcomplicated. The only thing that mixed voice is, is mixing the head voice and the chest voice together to create a really bright, a really forward, a really placed in your face, resonant, almost character-like sound, right? So when we're singing in the middle, we're creating a smooth transition from the chest voice to the head voice. So if I were to sing, I let it fall my heart, but as it fell, you rose to claim it, really chest voicey in that core, in that verse, excuse me, and then going up into the head voice on the chorus, but I set fire. Instead of just jumping right into head voice, we could have a little bit of mixed voice in there. But I set fire to the rain, and then go up into that head voice so that we're transitioning, so that we're not just flipping directly from chest voice into head voice, and there's a really obvious shift between those two sounds. We have that mixed voice on, but I set, but I set fire, right into that head voice on fire. So mixed voice is just simply mixing the two, placing that sound directly in your mask, in this bony part of your face, 
pushing it forward out through the face, still dropping the jaw and pointing your sound out like that. So I hope this helped you and I hope this gave you some basic insight into the voice, what it's all about, what singing is all about and how we make our sound. If you want some more individualized and in-depth training on these things, please schedule a lesson with me. I would be so happy to work with you. You can find my schedule on my website under schedule a lesson on the front page. And I look forward to working with all of you guys. I'd also love to know your feedback on this video and if it helped you, go ahead and send me an email with what you think about it and what you got out of it. And I would love to hear some feedback. Thank you guys.